This is China Business Cast, a weekly discussion from the front lines of business in China. We're here to get detailed and get personal with experienced entrepreneurs making things happen in China. If you want to learn from on the ground accounts of how business actually gets done, this is the program for you. Hello and welcome to China Business Cast. I'm your host JP. Today we're having a conversation with Michael Michelini. Michael left his job on Wall Street in 2007 and came to China. He's currently the co-founder and CEO of Social Agent, an online tool that helps businesses leverage Chinese social media for sales. We're going to find out how he was accepted to China Accelerator, a premier tech incubator in China, how he was able to put together a team for a tech startup even though he doesn't code. We're also going to talk about the lay of the land for Chinese social media and the opportunities that exist there. Hi Mike, how are you doing? I'm great JP, how are you? Uh, good. Great to have you on the show. So, um, tell us a little about your background. What is your China story? Why did you come here, and how did you get here? Yeah, it's been a. Uh, it's it's kind of hard for me to believe it, but it's been six years. Uh, I came at the end of two thousand seven. Like uh, like many Americans or Western entrepreneurs, you know, I always saw China as as a huge market, and all the products I was selling online seemed to be coming from China. And you know, I I just came for a trip here in、uh, trade shows, Canton Fair, Hong Kong Fair.、Uh, went through Beijing, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Shenzhen. It was just a really overwhelming experience, and、uh, I, there was a lot more to do. And I'm still nowhere near done with my six, even six years later. Yeah, take us back to 2007 when you just got here. Um, when you had had your feet on your ground, like what was it like then, and what what was on your mind, and what were you working on at the time? So I I think like many listening,、uh, I listened, I read the Four Hour Work Week a couple of times, and I left my job in early two thousand seven. I didn't move to China right away. I, I spent some time in San Diego、uh, with with a friend at their apartment and was working online. I was doing e-commerce. So it was a Follow my blog. I, I sold bar supplies almost eight years. Started selling online in 2004 on eBay, while I was still working in New York City and Wall Street as a part time, just learning how to get multiple streams of cash, cash flow, and and、uh, you know I just kept growing that business and and learning as I went, and it led me to China. Okay, great, and I understand now that you you've recently graduated from one of the premier. Technology incubators, China Accelerator, and、uh, you're working on、um, a social media product. But that that's a recent project. What happened between the time,、um, you know, when you were working on sourcing and e-commerce,、uh, between that time and、uh, your latest venture? Can you talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, sure. I think、uh, 2010 was kind of like my my、uh, the year of my change. 2010 was,、uh, I also believe, an interesting year for China, but、um, costs in China have been increasing pretty rapidly. As the economy grows, as the、uh, Chinese yuan or the RMB increases to the dollar, as、um, cost, labor costs, raw materials costs were increasing,、um, I kind of found my skill was not in the sourcing of the products, but in the marketing and selling. My skill has always been on the、uh, web, web marketing. SEO.、Uh, I came to China originally to, because I thought there would be the magic factor. They had every product I wanted. I would just be able to sell it directly. But I, I realized my skill was in the actual marketing and the sales. 2010、uh, was the year that I, I actually took some time in the Philippines and Thailand,、um, and and I learned I learned that my, when I came back to China at the end of 2010, that it would be to do sales and marketing, not to do sourcing. Gotcha. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about、um, the increase in prices and also even the trend of insourcing, right? Taking things that were originally outsourced in China and then bringing it back to the U.S. And it does seem like that is the trend. That transitions well to our、uh, next topic, which is your current company、uh, leveraging the opportunities on Chinese social media.、Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So my newest venture is Social Agent, and it's a tool to help businesses sell in the Chinese market. 
we've been using the lean startup method as much as possible. So by being lean, it doesn't just mean uh, eating instant noodles. We, we listen closely to our customers. And what we've learned is clients have trouble managing Chinese sales workers. And so we said earlier on the call, more and more companies need to not just buy from China, but sell, from, sell to the Chinese market. That is very difficult. I think uh, the reason I came to China was to buy, which is already hard enough to, to negotiate with factories, but to sell to the Chinese consumer is even harder. So with our tool, we find potential clients in the Chinese market through social media, and we add them to our lead management tool to help you assign them to different sales staff so that you can see what they're actually doing and measure the results on social media. Cool. And I understand you went through the incubator China Accelerator to flesh out this idea, right? Can you tell us about that process? I mean, you're not a coder yourself. How did you go about finding technical co-founders and then putting together the whole application and uh, getting sure. accepted? Yeah. Sure. So we were talking about a transition in like 2010, I would say, is when I started to move to uh, China sales and marketing rather than sourcing. And I had been doing a lot of consulting projects, um, helping companies uh, do their social media in China. And I went through a, I think the real, info, the real transition again into this new venture was um, I went to Shanghai and I attended a Lean Startup Machine weekend, which is similar to Startup Weekend. And in that, in that, uh, in that weekend, I met technical people that, that were interested in my project. Actually, I, I didn't just be them there. I had already known them, but we went through the weekend together. I met China Accelerator as a, as a sponsor and a mentor in Shanghai, and they were uh, really helpful. Specifically, I was Todd Embley. He's a, actually a Canadian. And, uh, you know, I, I think they saw my passion and the team that I was building. And, and uh, while we didn't have uh, prizes from that weekend, I think uh, people really were impressed what we had accomplished in just a weekend. And it continued to grow. And I think I've talked about this a lot. I think the important part about team building and everybody's always looking for technical co-founders is uh, not just looking for somebody like, to be a free programmer, right? It's the purpose of a technical co-founder is um, a person that understands technology and in, invests in your project. They believe you have to sell your idea to your team. It's not just to get investors and not just to get customers, but to sell your idea to your team members and convince them that this project is worth them working on. And also, they believe that you as the marketing or the sales co-founder or the business co-founder is able to execute on your side. I think a lot of times when everybody says, if I'm not technical, I'm marketing, all right? But actually, a lot of people aren't good at marketing either. They're just not technical, but they're not marketing, right? So you also have to prove to your technical team that you're able to execute on the marketing and sales. So I think that's that's how, uh, how I've been able to do it. And then going through China Accelerator. Right. What would you say was the most valuable thing that you got out of the China Accelerator program? I think the, the networking and the mentors. I mean, I'm, I've been in China, like I said, now six years. But when I joined there, five and a half years. So I'd already known a decent amount of people in, in China. But by being in that program, kind of just, I would say, maybe differentiated myself as a opportunist to an entrepreneur. You know, when I meet people and I say I was in China Accelerator, they, that means I'm doing one thing and I'm focused on one thing. That helped me to also team build with mentors and uh, grow my advisors to my startup um, and make it official. I think that would be my biggest, biggest um, takeaway from China Accelerator was I, I made it an official startup and a focused startup with uh, with a good group of mentors that support the team. Right. So now you are the marketing on Chinese social media guy, and your startup is the we want to market on Chinese social media startup. Right. Is there anything in terms of early traction that you want to share with us? You know, someone using the tool or someone finding great opportunities. Sure. So you know, as I said earlier, I'm really trying to be lean and. Everybody always talks about 
startups being scalable, right? And I think the biggest the biggest thing you can do is almost not be scalable at the beginning, which sounds a little bit crazy, but um, I'm working with the core group of first users that are, you know, I would say patient because as a tech startup, there's always a lot to be desired in our feature set. So we work with 10, about 10 clients right now. They're in different industries. I would say it's more for a B2B tool. So we're working with a, a real estate company in New York City. I, I can't disclose client names, but um, he's, he's working with a Chinese sales. He's only been to Hong Kong. He's never been to mainland China. And he actually now has an agency in Beijing reselling his properties. He has scheduled calls with the Shanghai um, buyer for one of their New York properties. And he has engaged with a few other potential buyers. And this is only one month. Honestly, like um, while we went through Trying Accelerator, it's eight months now um, since we started in August. The product development has been very, very difficult um, to do a software product. So, I mean, we've only been really live for one to two months to validate the business. And as one client, we're working with others that are in educational consulting. Again, this is a, a trust issue. So we, we help build trust with Chinese consumers to foreign buy, foreign sellers. They don't know these companies in the U.S. They don't trust them. So again, we're scheduling phone calls with the um, Washington, D.C. educational consultant to help students in China go to the U.S. And he's been happy. We're working with other, other clients in New Zealand that are helping track imported milk powder to ensure that the quality of the milk powder is is what it really is meant to be. And they've been getting a lot of surveys and feedback from the Chinese market, and they're happy. Cool. To have a better understanding of the real potential here, maybe we can get you as the social, Chinese social media expert to give us a quick lay of the land of Chinese social media. What's out there and you know what are the main channels and the main networks? I think everybody, uh, in, you know, over in the in the West, you know, says the copied. There's the copied Twitter. There's a copied Facebook. Now there's maybe the copied WhatsApp. So maybe we can just talk about it in that fashion. I don't think they're exact copies. They are more localized versions. Set may, maybe I'm not gonna get political, but I think those that are aware of the Chinese market should be um, aware that Facebook and Twitter and most um, Western social media networks are not accessible in the Chinese internet, which then creates these newer local local uh, versions. Still think the biggest network to pay attention to is Sina Weibo. And Sina Weibo is basically the market leader of Twitter and in China with 350 million active users. So, you know, just the, the size there, that's bigger than the population of the United States of America, right? So that that's the Chinese Twitter is Weibo. And then another big player coming quickly into the market is uh, WeChat or Weixin in Chinese. I think the easiest way to explain this is the WhatsApp, which is micro messaging. So it allows you to send messages to your friends but they're hybrids, they're becoming social networks. So imagine WhatsApp with sharing to your wall on WhatsApp and all your WhatsApp friends can see what you're, you know, what you're doing, your status messages just like Facebook. So it's kind of mashing up Facebook into WhatsApp. Uh, also, going back to Sina Weibo, that's kind of a mashup of Facebook and Twitter together because it's the nature of it. Basically, um, Chinese social media kind of learns from English social media and sees what's effective and not, and they usually mash it up, and it's pretty pretty cool. And Chinese people really do use social media more than, I would say, in the West. I'm pretty active also on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, but there's not really a LinkedIn in China. I would, I would argue uh, Sina Weibo is kind of the LinkedIn of China because you have your public profiles, and business professionals, white collar people, all use uh, Sina Weibo and they have verification. So I know they have the verification in, in Twitter as well, but it's more widespread in China. And for those familiar with the Chinese market, trust is kind of one of the biggest issues, is people don't trust others easily. 
And by social media getting so widespread in China, their verification process proves the people are who they say they are. They work for the company that they say they work for. So this allows the information flow and the trust to go quicker between people and businesses. So I, those are the main two I would talk about. Ren Ren is kind of a little bit not as popular now. That's like the pure copy of Facebook and Kaishin. But I would really just say the main two to really focus on for entrepreneurs or, or small businesses would be Sina Weibo and uh, WeChat or Weixing. And do you think QQ's on the down down slope? Because I know Weixing is by the same company, right? Tencent. Yeah. And it just came out of, I guess, in the past one or two years, and it's up to like 300 million users. It just yeah. exploded. Um, but within the same company, they also run QQ, which is the, the Chinese copy of ICQ back in the day. And yeah. they, have a, they have a mobile version as well. Yeah. So I think, you know, you and I are familiar. Tencent is the parent company of QQ and WeChat. So I think, I think they're pretty smart. They, they, they are kind of, in a way, competing with themselves by creating a WeChat on, that maybe would compete with QQ. QQ is still much more widespread, of course, because it's not, WeChat is only for smartphone users. So you're limiting your users to people that have smartphones. And in China, of course, like in the big cities, pretty much everybody has a smartphone, like Android or iPhone now. But uh, in, in, in inland China, like uh, second tier cities or, or, or you know, rural areas, everybody has QQ. So I don't think QQ is going away. But, you know, I think Tencent as a parent company of those two products is smart by not allowing a new player to create the WeChat and beat them. So they're creating the, the smartphone QQ. Um, QQ is okay on the phone now. I have QQ on my phone, but it's not really built for a uh, mobile, kind of like a patched together mobile version, whereas Weixin is or WeChat is built for your phone. <clears throat> so uh, I think they're smart, and maybe in the future they'll merge the two. But uh, you know, I think they're they're pretty they're pretty clever. They're really known for integrating all their products, so they cross market all of their products. Interesting. You also mentioned that, you know, the Chinese consumers use more of social media and maybe they use it a little bit differently. Can you talk about some of the differences that you observe between Chinese social media and the West? I think the biggest difference is in Twitter and Facebook. There's Again, I'm almost getting a little bit removed from the American market or the, the Western market. But as far as I understand, they quote-unquote older people or the business people don't really use it. They still look at Twitter and Facebook as like kids' stuff. The same happened with instant messaging. Like we're talking about QQ. Everybody in China has a QQ. And that was since the, maybe the 90s or at least early 2000s, whereas in the U.S., Skype and other tools are not really – instant messaging tools are still looked at as like kids' stuff, I think, for the most part, uh, unless you're doing international business. So the biggest difference is that everybody uses it in China, like older established businessmen I can talk to on social media. They have QQ. I talk to a 50 or 60 year old businessman, investors, CEOs, they all have it. I mean, maybe you can contend that they have a LinkedIn, but I just, for some reason, noticed that the Chinese business community embraces social media much faster and they really utilize it more. Whereas... CEOs and bosses and businessmen and investors in the U.S. are still like slower to use these Twitter and Facebook and maybe even LinkedIn in their in their networking. Do you do you have any examples or any case studies of a few companies or a few people who are really winning and doing it right on Chinese social media? I mean, it's this obvious one to me, but maybe for the people listening on the on the call, uh, I think Weibo and, and uh, Li Kai Fu or uh, Kai Fu Li, depending on if you're saying an English version or the Chinese version, he's the ex-Google uh, China CEO. And uh, he is the definition, I think, of the right way to use social media. For those that don't know him, he's uh, currently the CEO of uh, Incubator Innovation Works in Beijing. He barely even uses uh, Weibo as a company uh, account. They have it more for HR or for applications, but he really uses his personal brand. And uh, he is uh, posting like all day messages. He really builds a good 
huge following that drives traffic and applications to his program. He would be one example of, of a really good person using it. Um, you know, like a lot of these programs, the reason I, I find out about these Chinese um, incubators and events is from social media in China. They all have accounts. They're usually always verified. I'm trying to think here of some specific examples, but I, I, I guess it's, it's it, like I said earlier, it's like the LinkedIn. So you can search inside of Weibo and find pretty much everybody that's anybody. Usually they're pretty responsive to. So by messaging them on, on the system itself, they're pretty responsive to, uh, to get back to you. So it's a pretty instantaneous. Uh, and also it's used for company updates. Like uh, another ex really interesting example was we were uh, not sure if someone was who they said they were. They Their name card said they were a CEO of a company and they were trying to do business with us. And for some reason, uh, our team didn't have a, a feeling that they really were. So we went to the verified account of that company and asked them. And within 15 minutes, they replied, no, he's not. And this is the right person. And they, <laughs> they, they called us. So, oh boy, ah, that's business in China for you. Yeah, that is, and that's a, it's a sad thing about business in China, but I think this is creating real transparency. That That's a real positive effect of social media in China, um, is that there's this transparency and there's no more of this shady business of multiple name cards and, and kind of deceiving. That That's how there was, that's why there's this mistrust in the market, because there's so many people and this there was no really like a social security system to track. And now like your ID number is your like Weibo number, you know, like now people can check that and see who you are. So it's really kind of hard to, to cheat and deceive with this new social media. That's an awesome example. So going on from that, I'm thinking, you know, I'm a lone entrepreneur. I'm interested in profit. I'm pretty tech savvy. You know, I can get on the Chinese social media. You know, what, what are the real biggest opportunities? What are the actions that I should take in order to get most out of it? So the hardest part, of course, is the language. And also in China, the, because of what we were just saying, the deceiving of people saying they're not who they are, there is some extra steps in getting verified. But I think, you know, for an entrepreneur is signing up for Weibo.com, they, they do have an okay English version um, and creating an account. Just and uh, being personable, just like in Twitter or Facebook, I think more effective accounts are personal accounts, but I think even more so in China. So don't be afraid to put your own face. They actually like foreigners. They like to talk to foreigners, foreigners being non-Chinese. I would say put your real photo, put your real name, try to get verified, and don't be afraid to ask. You know, even I, my, I don't, I, I'm a little bit embarrassed, but... Um, I still don't read and uh, write Chinese characters. Uh, I, I can talk to most of them in English. While they might not post in English, usually they can talk to you in English. You know, I think just by getting on, on there, you could have a Chinese assistant that could find people on Weibo that you're looking for. So say you're looking, you're, you're selling, uh, you want to sell headsets to the Chinese market. You could find those potential people, add them to a list, engage with them, ask them questions, maybe survey them, or just by learning from your potential customers, potential distributors. And, and I, I think you would be surprised at how friendly and engaging people would be to, to help you, especially as a foreigner. The, you know, a lot of people think Chinese are, I guess everybody's scared of another market, right? Like, Chinese, I think, are scared of Americans. Americans are scared of China. Not scared, but, you know, there's this hesitation of cultural differences. But normally when the personal conversations happen, it makes people more real. And that's, again, why I would suggest to use your own face rather than a company logo. Because um, I think everywhere, but especially Chinese, they like, they like face. They like to trust, know who they're dealing with. So create an account and just uh, find the potential people and just and just talk to them. Don't don't and don't sell like just like in Twitter or Facebook. You don't just try to push people to buy your product. You talk to them, see if that's what they like, how they can cooperate, things like that. Yeah, I, I've heard it described it described one way before, and I thought it was pretty accurate. It's it's like social media is kind of like a cocktail party, right? If you just show up and sell, then nobody wants to talk to you. <laughs> 
True, true. Yep, yeah, it's about building building relationships, right? So. Great. Yeah, thanks for the great overview and some real examples of how you, you use Chinese social media. So we're going to wrap up the interview and want to give you a chance to give Social Agent a full plug okay. and also uh, uh, give us a way how we can connect with you. Okay, sure. My elevator pitch for Social Agent is an online tool to help companies find track, manage, and report on customers in the Chinese market. So in, in English, that means we find customers, and then in our CRM tool, allow you to keep that lead list, just like uh, instead of an Excel spreadsheet, you have an online tool, and you can share those to your maybe Chinese assistant or your um, partner team and measure the results. Because I think a lot of people said in Chinese social media, there is a lot of maybe zombie accounts and, and, and kind of like spam. So we try to filter that spam and find the real value. And the way to contact me is, you know, of course, you can, you can talk to me on Chinese social media or English social media. I love, I love all social media. So my, my handles are Michelini, my last name, M-I-C-H-E-L-I-N-I. -I. So at Michelini is Twitter and Weibo. Those are my two preferred ways. Okay, perfect. And we'll link up to that in the show notes as well. Okay, Thanks cool. very much, Michael. Hope you enjoyed this episode of China Business Cast. For more about the program and to join the conversation online, check out ChinaBusinessCast.com. Thank you for listening.